give it a few moments for everyone to join. I'll say again, sorry I'm delayed. I'm not good at timekeeping. I, I was booking a helicopter tour. A helicopter tour around some waterfalls. I got slightly delayed. But how are you doing? How is everyone? Hello, Segal. Hello, uh, Raven. How is everyone doing? Can you hear me? If you can hear me, please. Uh, oh, you can. Okay. Hey. So how is everyone doing today? How is everybody? Hey. What is going on? It's quite warm where I am right now. So slightly delayed, like I say, like I'm always, um, not good with timekeeping. Because I was booking various things for my next travels. Um, I was booking a helicopter tour around some waterfalls. And they, I've never been on a helicopter before, so first time. But how is everyone doing? How are you enjoying your summer? Where you are based? Are you able to live your life and be happy or are you still stuck in lots of pain where are you on the journey of the twin flame journey last week was the Lionsgate portal and the energy started from the 4th of october full moon until the 19th so how's everyone integrating some people were very anxious the day before the nights or angry how are you lot doing so today's episode or today's live is about where are you rejecting yourself and I have made uh, videos about this before quite sassy videos as always so this is going to be a bit more um more um wholesome more loving conversation okay so oftentimes if not always especially if you're in separation the reason being is because you're seeing your twin flame your divine masculine as separate from yourself as a different entity and a being when they in fact Physically in the 3D, it looks like that, but they're not. Energetically, you are just one being. You're one chakra system, one soul vibrating back and forth, okay? So you have to get to that stage where you go from duality to unity consciousness to oneness. And that's when you get into union, inner union and outer union. But oftentimes we are rejecting ourselves and ourselves are is our divine masculine as well, okay? We are rejecting, we are pushing them away by seeing them separate, by being triggered, by being angry, by hating them. And you know, I've been there too. I mean, only, I think, was it not last week, maybe a week and a half or two weeks ago, I was so angry. <laughs> I was so angry uh, at my divine masculine. But oftentimes, that anger is not just based upon him, it's also my own stuff and my ancestral stuff. And I looked into that and I saw how. Some of my family members behave when they ghost each other, when they get angry with each other, they blank each other at family functions and events because there's that that we're purging too. The stuff that's stuck within our vibration, within our energy, that we are basically purging as twin flames. So oftentimes when we get angry, annoyed or triggered by our divine masculine, we put all the blame on them, but it doesn't actually, it shouldn't actually go all onto them. I mean, some of it might, but most of it is our own stuff. Because if we were healed within or unbothered within, we wouldn't get triggered by what they're doing. And they're compelled to trigger all the stuff that's stuck in our vibration. It works like this. You have one consciousness, one soul, one blueprint, okay? Whatever one goes through, the other one, it's imprinted in the consciousness, so they feel it too. So for example, if one is sexually abused, God forbid, the other one will feel that in their consciousness. The other one may even feel that they were sexually abused or have thoughts and dreams and can feel all that at the same time that is going on. Very strange, very crazy. And it can be mirrored, okay? So if one is sexually abused, the other one could be physically or one is physically sexually abused, the other one could be mentally and emotionally abused. So you basically are sharing the same thing. So you're going through the same stuff and it's being imprinted. So whatever one shows, it's just a mirror to whatever the other is going through or whatever the other has traumas in so when we get angry when we start rejecting and saying i don't want him he's an asshole and i hate him or whatever he's with another person or he's doing stupid things he's in addictive energy he's sleeping around doing drugs whatever 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 we're again seeing them as separate from ourselves and we are also rejecting them and getting triggered by whatever they are showing is within us 
because both of us go through the same things. And when we are rejecting them, we are rejecting ourselves. And people always say this, and you're like, nah, I don't understand this, I don't get this. Because they are you, and you're seeing them as a separate entity from yourself. And as you reject that, that entity, you're rejecting the shadow selves within you that you need to basically climatize, integrate, and love. Because they will always show you your deepest, darkest, unconscious, unhealed aspects. It will hurt where there needs to be healing done. They will trigger where you've got shadows. So when you basically reject them, you are not integrating the shadows that exist within you. You're not healing those aspects within you. So when you run away from them, run away from yourself, when you're chasing, you're running anyway, you're basically not integrating, accepting, or loving that aspect within yourself because they just show you and mirror that aspect within you. So if you want to get into inner union, you want to get into outer union, or if you just want to get enlightened, just, or liberated, or ascended, you must start to actually integrate all aspects of yourself. You are a big puzzle. Some of the puzzles, pieces, you cannot see. They're in the shadow. That's your divine masculine. That's what they put the spotlight on. And if you get triggered by that, it's fine. But if you blame them, then that's your doing, okay? Because you're not integrating those parts of yourself. You're rejecting them. As you reject them, you're rejecting yourself. So they're giving you a huge spiel about that. And it's recorded, so it'll be replayed, so you can watch it again. To explain why what they do exists within you, because if it did not, they wouldn't do it, and it wouldn't trigger you, okay? So they do those things because they are inside you, and when you push them away, get hating on them, and sad and upset and angry, and I don't want them, I'm going to get a soulmate, blah, blah, blah. you're firstly seeing it as a romantic relationship, which is not. Firstly, it's a, it's, a, it's a journey of integrating your shadows, bringing them in, not rejecting yourself. And secondly, you are rejecting yourself, right? Because those aspects within you, in, within you that they trigger or put a spotlight on, you don't like it. You don't like it because you don't want to believe and, and to understand that's in you. Because we're all crazy at the end of the day. And most people are in denial, right? Most people would say, oh, that's not me. Those people are bad and judging everyone. For example, there was the Trump con um, convention um, t two weeks ago, I think. And, you know, they're all anti-gay and anti-this and anti-abortion and anti-all these things, women or whatever. The place where they had the convention, um, millions of people there, the Grinder app, the gay dating app collapsed, um, crashed because there were so many people joining it, you know. So oftentimes those who are most judgmental, most pointing their fingers at others, that stuff is within us, okay. Because otherwise we wouldn't react, we wouldn't judge, we wouldn't get annoyed. So with your divine masculine, if you are triggered, if you are reacting, if you are judging them, there's something within you that you're not accepting, you're not integrating, you're not loving, you're not bringing into wholeness. That's where we reject ourselves. They show us that divine mirror. So we must love ourselves and go within and love all aspects that we can see, but we can't see everything because we have lots of blind spots. That's where the divine masculine will um, with, their, with their triggering, put the focus on those areas where it hurts, where it isn't integrated. And after you've healed it, it may take a while, but then you're done, okay? And we do the same for them too, because, oh, he's having a great life, he's sleeping with everyone, and he's taking drugs, and he's on social media, and da, 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 I hate him, I hope he blah, 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 blah. No, they show that they are doing great, but they're not, and actually they are suffering, so you need to like not put the focus on that. It looks different. And also their job first is to trigger you, but we do trigger them also. We trigger all their shadow aspects as well, their unworthiness, their insecurity. They run because they're scared, okay? Because we shine the light so brightly on them. They've never had it, sh had it shine on those aspects. We are a little bit more geared up to look at the shadows and we are a bit more open to inner work, therapy, healing, because we're spiritual, right? We're more able to put, connect the dots and try to figure out where these pathologies and ideas and psychologies come from. We are more further on the journey in that regard, but they are not, okay? It's like grabbing a young child who's been abused and tortured and making them look at all the people, all the things that did bad to them. 
it's horrific, right? So they run because they're scared. For us, we're more of the adult, so we can see that and work on it a bit more. I mean, some of us are more mature than others, obviously. But where are you rejecting yourself? And I want you to write this down in the comments because the thing is, I have come to a stage where I've realized every single thing that my twin flame mirrors is within me. And my twin flame has done so many stupid things, I think. But that's judgment again, right? So I shouldn't be judging up because I do stupid things too. But my twin flame has done a lot of things and that's, that's affected me. And as, as the twin who can see more ahead usually and see the future, you're kind of almost trying to warn them. But they're not going to listen, you know, and that's fine. So let them get on with it. Allow them, you know, be so loving and kind to see the innocence in them. Because like I said, they're like the child. So when we start, stop rejecting ourselves, when we stop rejecting them, we will start seeing them through the eyes of source or the eyes of God. And God sees everyone through loving eyes, like a, a divine mother, right? Never punishing, never punitive, always saying, come this way, come this way. Even if the child messes up, it's like, don't worry, dear, come this way, come this way. And God is always like that too. God doesn't, uh, you know, hate you. God just wants you to realign. The universe just wants you to realign. And that's the thing with the divine masculine. Quite often, they're not aligned to themselves because they don't know who they are. But then we get rattled by their behavior because we are rejecting ourselves. I want you to write in the comments, where are you rejecting yourself? Now, you know, I've, like I said, I've come to a stage where I realized everything that is mirrored is within me. And every single time I've done something, it's been mirrored back. So I am no saint and we need to get to that stage where we say we are not perfect and neither are they. So use that as a tool to be able to understand where you're rejecting and see them through the eyes of source. So see them as that innocent, beautiful person and bring them close to your heart. You know, bring rather than repelling, rejecting. And when you're chasing, you're running as well you know, from yourself. So you're repelling and rejecting. So rather than doing all that stuff and saying, oh, I hate you playing this game of love you and hate you and <sighs> codependency and expectation. Take away the romantic label. See it as a journey of spiritual ascension. And some of you will like, oh, but I want to get married. I want to have kids. If you do get a soulmate, you'll still think about your twin flame, but you can do that if you want to live a um, worldly life as such, then get a soulmate if you can, if you want, if they'll come to you and if they'll stick by you, don't go looking for it, allow it to happen naturally. But oftentimes soulmates will come for a short period and leave because they're here to take you back on the path you're meant to be. Now, once you accept the path that you are, remove the romantic notions and get deep within and start healing. Don't sit around waiting for divine timing and things to happen. Work in divine order. Get your ducks in order for yourself do your inner work okay anything that's shown love yourself don't reject those aspects whatever your twin flame mirrors integrate it see them as innocent pure souls and then bring them close to your heart space energetically okay and um, bring them close as you do your visualization or imagination bring them close into yourself and bring them inside your heart space and just let them live there and and realize that you are one remove the notions of separation remove the uh, notions of me and them just bring it all as one okay and don't judge them don't hate them they will improve they do get better the only way the only reason why some twin flames don't get into union is number one they're not twin flames number two they don't do the work to get into union and number three they um you know basically just settle but if you do the work and you commit to yourself, that won't happen. It takes as long as it takes. It's in the journey of ascension. We're all at different places because we all have different karmas, ancestral issues, and stuff to heal on earth. But go within and keep loving all aspects. And also love the aspects that your twin flame shows. Sometimes, yes, it's very hard when it's really triggering and it's really horrible then give yourself the grace period, you know, usually 24 hours, maybe sometimes a few days. I have gone there too. I have wished so much bad on my twin flame at times when I felt so bad. But then they do probably feel the same way at times. I don't know. Um, often they are just scared, but in awe of our energy because we are powerful. Okay. So 
let me answer some questions, but definitely bring them in. Bring them into your heart space and bring them close inside yourself and don't see them as separate and don't reject them. Because when we are rejecting aspects of ourselves, which is mirrored through them, we are repelling them, we are rejecting them, and we're staying in separation. So, you know, anything that you say about yourself, the way you look, the way you behave, the person you are, if it's negative, if it's self-deprecating, then stop all that because thoughts, words, feelings, actions, all align, okay? So keep everything positive. And also, whatever your twin flame is mirroring right now, it's not the true reality. It's not the true reality. It's you showing you what you need to fix up. It's not the true reality. And when you start going off the path, you're redirected because they're helping you, the universe is helping you. But it's not the real reality. So don't look at the current reality. Look at the final goal in manifestation, right? See how it's going to end up. And also be very forgiving because when you're going through separation and healing, it's a mess, okay? And oftentimes the divine masculine has more mess to clear up than we do. And they do it very messily in the physical because they're just like a deer in the headlights, very unaware, unawake, unknown, just rumbling and running around trying to run away from you. So it looks kind of crazy. Give them the grace period. Allow them to act as crazy as they want. Just say, you got to do you. you got to empty your cup. You've got to get rid of that stuff from your ancestral lineage, from your karma, from humanity. There's a lot of things to do. Go get on with it. Go get on with it. And when you're ready, come back. Yeah, I'll get on with my stuff and do what I've got to do. You both have your own separate projects, your separate essays, assignments, God-given tasks to do. The way they do it, in the manner they do it, is their business. That's their garden. They are sovereign. Do not control them. The way you do it is your business, okay? And yes, what they do, it will trigger you because it will be done in a silly way. But it is working on your issues because they're working on the same issues as you. Like I said, it's soul imprinted from childhood and from past lives in your joint consciousness. It's all imprinted in both of you. So they're trying to purge it out, albeit from an external uh, crazy way. <laughs> <laughs> and you're trying to do it from more of an internal way. But I'm, I guarantee you, sometimes you're going to be crazy too. So don't sit on your high horse, okay? Really start to love all aspects. All aspects of what they're showing, what you're showing, and stop judging and just see it as what it is, okay? So let's answer some questions now. Let's see what is going on. I know, some people are writing questions. On TikTok, it's more <laughs> questions, I guess. Quite crazy on TikTok, usually. Um, okay, let's go for it. Okay, so lots of people joined. Thank you for joining. I hope you're well. The DM is silent nowadays in separation. I am feeling very stuck sometimes because mirroring is going on, but I am in high vibration and I am picking up the DM, DM's energy sometimes. So Sega. Okay, wonderful. So obviously in separation, it is time to be by yourself and to work on things. And that's what they're doing. And usually when you chase or you keep messaging them, they'll block you or say go away. Okay. Because it's meant to be their time and your time separate. Um, you're saying you're high vibration, but then you're feeling stuck. So you're going from high to low, okay, which is fine. Um, and when you pick up their energy, like I said earlier, you are one joint consciousness. So you, they are healing those parts that you need to heal in your consciousness. So when you feel their energy, it's actually your energy too. And you can transmute that and heal that. Yes. Sometimes they have separate sort of ancestral uh, patterns to heal. You have the same karma for each for your own soul, the same karma both of you have that you're healing. Um, but there may have been other family ancestral stuff that you have to deal with, which is separate. So I understand that, and they're going through that. It's, I feel like the the healing is always simultaneous. They're working on the same issue that you're working on albeit from a different angle and way, okay? So whatever you pick up, just go within and love yourself. I must have a ginormous amount of shadow. Greenwood, I seriously, listen, I feel you, I hear you, and I'm going to say yes to some people do have, okay? Some people would have done a lot of work in past lives, but this life is easy. Some people would have ended up in ancestral lineages that are easier, and some people would have chosen less bigger tasks to do on earth. You know, some of us are healing sexual abuse. Some of us are healing pedophilia. Some of us are healing, um, I don't know, 
drug addiction, women, violence, abuse, trafficking, um, sexuality, LGBT, trans, non-binary, all sorts of things, hunger, poverty, refugee, blah, blah, blah. Some people have chosen big chunks because they're badass, probably. And some people have chosen less, you know, because they don't want so much to deal with with this life, and that's fine. So you might have a, a huge amount of work, but that means you're able to do it too. And you know, like some people ask how long and this, it's all dependent on your individual assignment, okay? How do I restrict my divine masculine's passionate energies reaching me? It hinders my focus on my progress, okay? So that's uh, Naina. You are your divine masculine, first of all. Let's stop all this separation nonsense. They are you and you are them. You are one soul, okay? And you have your divine masculine, divine feminine energies within you. Now, if you are feeling passionate energies, that's your divine masculine energies within you. Your kundalini is still healing the root chakra and the sacral chakra and the chakras low down below because you're still stuck in there. When I work with clients, I can feel where they are in their um, chakra system, where the blocks are, where they're stuck. If I feel um, sexual energy, it's usually down below I feel it, I can tell that's what they're working on. And as you go up and up and up, you'll get to the heart space and then you go further up. So if you are feeling overwhelmed by passionate energies, that's you're still needing to clear those chakras. And it's your chakras because you share them. So take responsibility. I, I dislike when people put the blame on, oh, I feel his energy. He's down. Get rid of him. It's your own energy that you need to work on. Okay. Then you get to a point where you are balanced and neutral and they feel are the same because they they are you you are them so they feel that way yes sometimes they go for it afterwards but the more balanced you are the more balanced they are and then you stop feeling their crazy energy you don't feel it as much hello from las vegas love your knowledge thank you a lot of work to get that knowledge how do you go about becoming a twin flame coach or guide okay thank you have you so to be a coach you don't actually need any qualifications in um, the Western world. I do have qualifications, quite a few, but there's no um, sort of professional body for that, uh, which is kind of da dangerous as well. But I'm a practitioner, master practitioner, and a trainer in many, many modalities, including coaching. So um, either you can go and get training done, or you can just, if you're a good guide, set up. But your knowledge must be there, right? Because there's a law of different types of information out there. So um, the best thing to do is just figure out the journey for yourself and then see how you can help others. And then you just become it. You know, maybe get yourself out on social media. Okay, Vanabli Banerjee says, funny how he never listens and ends up in situations I've already warned about. Yes, it's like a, a naughty child, isn't it? Like you say, oh, don't put your fingers in the fire and they do it. And we've all done it. I've done it too. You know, in the car, you have those like uh, lighter things that you press and you take it out. And when I was like eight years old, I stuck my finger in there, didn't I? And burnt my fingers, even though I'm not meant to do that. So we all do it. They're unawakened. And they, they've been controlled by toxic feminine energies before, like their mothers or other people. So they don't trust, okay? They've been battered and abused. They haven't had guidance. They haven't got God. So they will often hear what you're saying and think you're trying to control and manipulate them. When you're only trying to help them, they won't see it that way. So, so in those situations, you've got to let them learn their own way. And they will learn. Trust it. Okay. Ooh. Do I offer training or guidance? Yes, I do. Okay. Sorry, it skipped a little bit. Where did we go? Here we go. Um, I'm rejecting my purse, but I have to continue to do what I need to do. I'm rejecting my purse. Do you mean your purpose? I think you mean you're rejecting your purpose. But I have to continue to do what I need to do. You can do your purpose part-time. You can do your purpose on the side. I have a job. I work four days a week. And the rest of the time, I do this kind of stuff, don't I? So you can start building up gradually. And your purpose can be... First of all, your purpose is to get into inner union, to heal yourself, get into outer union, and then it's to help others. So do that first, you know? Oh, no, you're not purpose, thank you. Okay, 
Um, that was me. And Anna wrote, I have no idea, just blind spots at this moment. I'm full of love for him though. Good. If you're at a point of love for him, great. Because I have struggled. I'm not going to lie. I have struggled about just having love because I go, have gone through and recently <laughs> love and hate, love and hate. Get yeah, really triggered. That's the anger though that needs to be coming out from my ancestral lineage. Okay. How do you overcome insomnia in this journey? Okay. I'm lucky because I've never suffered from insomnia, really. Um, but some people do. Now, there's something on Amazon. It's called homopathic medicine called neuroxin. N-E-U-R-X-R-A-N, -E I think. Only about $10. It helps you calm down and relax and go to sleep. Gets rid of the stress, depression. So I wouldn't recommend, you know, drugs, weed, smoking, or alcohol. I'd recommend holistic ways. If you are feeling unable to sleep, Lay down in Shavasana pose, which is like a star-shaped pose on your bed. Have some relaxing music and just do breath work. Do meditation and you will soon fall asleep. It takes time. Some people suffer from um, sleeplessness anyways. But you can calm yourself down. You might even want to look into plant medicine as well. Okay, Raj says, why am I disappointed in him for not trying to be better as a person? For not understanding why they behave that way? Eventually, they will become better, okay? You have to let them do it in their own way. Stop getting in the way of how it has to progress. We are not their guide in that sense. We're the leader. They have spirit guides that we share. There's also God, the universe, and they have their own course of action, their own program, their own journey. And they have their own ancestral family lineage to heal as well. So they are less aware and less conscious, more like a child. They, they're like more of our unconscious self and they don't trust people that often, okay? They feel unworthy and all sorts of things. So don't be disappointed. Think of it this way. Say you're a teacher and you're teaching very, very young children and you're teaching them how to put their shoes on, how to go to the bathroom and how to eat their food and how to um, put their jumper on. Are you gonna get annoyed with them if they're unable to do it the first few times? Start to be a bit more compassionate and allow them to take their time, but they will get there. They will get there with encouragement and positivity. Okay, my twin flame is a public figure. He doesn't follow me, but expects me to do everything. Whenever I deny to do this, he takes the help of karmics. Okay, so you have to be very wary also between a twin flame and someone who's not the twin flame, okay? Um, but basically, go within and heal this first. So this thing about doing everything but not deserving or feeling worthy to receive the same back, right? That might be something from childhood you need to look at. And that's what he's mirroring and triggering in you, like treating you like a servant, okay? And then if you don't do it, going to others. So there's this element of, I have to do it, otherwise he will go for others. Let him do. Let him go to whoever he wants. Let the karma bust his ass. Let the karma <laughs> wake him up. He's going to go. If he's your twin flame and he's going to go off with others, you better believe it. You better believe it. The tower will happen. You better believe it. The thunderbolts will fall on their head. And you better believe it. They'll scream and cry and come running back. You better believe it. Be okay to let them go. Okay. So that's number one. Let them go and allow them to work it out their own way. And then number two is also, where are you acting and behaving unworthy and insecure and desperate, allowing a man or a person to um, take advantage of you. That's something you need to heal. Okay, a lot of self-work, self-love. Okay, Evan. Manny, why do I see them play my birthday numbers and the third party is copying them and playing the birthday as well? How do I stop this? Because it really triggers why the third party doing this. Okay, good question. Because the question less so good, but the answer more so good. Um, that I've learned from others. I'm not going to take credit, be egotistical. This is the answer. Do not focus on the karmic. <laughs> you are manifesting it more so. Do not focus on the karmics. Do not focus on the negative things they do. Do not focus on the negative people they're around. Focus on the end result as though you want it. The more you get uh, triggered and insecure about the bad stuff or the problems or the triggers, the more they will amplify until... They, you're exhausted and surrendered and you no longer care and you're balanced. That's the purpose, to keep getting it out of you. Like I said in the beginning, the anger that I sometimes get 
steel when wanting to inflame triggers is because of my ancestral stuff. It's not much to do with him, to be honest, and he's just bringing it out for me. He's acting silly at times, but that's because he has to get that out of my system. So your twin flame and the karmic is acting silly so that they can trigger you to be able to stop giving a crap about stupid numbers. And I've said to you before, to many people, I've said it in videos, initially you see the signs and synchronicities in the dreams to show you that you're on the journey. But then after that, you let it go. The numbers are there to, uh, in the beginning to basically put coding into your system, okay? They're light codes. But after a while, you see it, you let it go. You see it, you let it go. Everything is about being in zero point, which is grounded and balanced and not affected. You want to get to a stage where you're no longer triggered. Don't give a rat's ass about birthday numbers or karmics or other things. Don't focus on karmics. Don't focus on the negative stuff. Focus on the truth. Remember the story that I asked everyone to write, the twin flame love story? Focus on that. All his feelings move in my direction. I feel him always. And I'm sure he feels you too. So start to ground it into love and peace and raise that vibration. Can I help her to heal with talk, by talking to her? If she'll listen, then go for it, my love. Usually they don't want to listen. <laughs> They're running away. And they feel the energy, okay? Twin friends feel the energy. So go within and love yourself and heal it within yourself. You're not here to fix them. You're here to fix yourself and then they just mirror it. Because as you're fixing yourself, they're fixing themselves in their own way. And that's okay. Uh, why does the Divine Masculine give the, uh, the Divine Feminine breadcrumbs? Okay. So let's uh, rephrase. Why does the Toxic Masculine give the Toxic Feminine breadcrumbs? Because the Toxic Feminine is codependent. The Divine Masculine is geared, programmed to trigger codependency out of the system. Okay. So... The Divine Feminine does not need anything from anyone. The Divine Feminine is in their power. And the Divine Masculine understands that and mirrors it. There we go. When they start to talk to you after separation, but still not showing up completely. It's baby steps. When a toddler starts to walk, do they do the Olympic marathon straight away? No. Why do we want everything now? It's slow baby steps. You have waited eons, thousands of years, millions of years to get to your twin flame. Take it slow. Chill. Relax. Be um, friendly. Get to know them. Don't expect anything. And let the bloss love blossom gradually with time. Allow the trust to build in time. Okay? It takes time. Do you offer training or guidance? Um, I'm not actually providing at the moment any training to be a coach maybe i will one day at the moment i'm very very busy i'm planning a many month trip <laughs> to many countries uh, which i'll be going to soon and then i'm also writing a book and doing online courses but maybe after that we, i could offer some training um guidance for sure you can have a one-to-one -one session with me for that i know because you're more interested in coaching aren't you? do all divine masculine lies come to the surface eventually Everything comes to the surface eventually. And whatever they do, they have to um, bear the brunt of it. They have to deal with it. They have to, um, anything they do against you, you better believe they pay for it. Times 10,000, they do. So don't worry. And we don't want to be revengeful anyway. We don't expect or want them to suffer. It will happen. Just let them, let them go for it. People lie because they're wounded and toxic. A divine person does not do that. So that's an unhealed person. And what are you going to do? You want to fight with an unhealed person? Most of humanity is unhealed. You want to fight with them on the street? I'd rather you didn't. Can we choose a mantra meditation as inner work? You can choose whatever you want, but I would recommend um, the thing that helps you, helps me the most is inner child self-love. The twin flames, usually everyone is lacking self-love and you want to heal that within. So close your eyes. Connect with your inner being, your inner child, your inner self, and just love them. Listen to them. Ask them what they want and just be there for them and feel the peace. Do I have a guru? God is our guru. There you go. Um, if you mean teacher, I have used various coaches in the past, but the person I kind of mostly speak to at times is my psychic. She's also, she's also good at coaching, called Isla. 
So if you're interested, I can DM me, I can send you her information. She's amazing. I learn a lot from her. But I've learned a lot from lots of things in, throughout my past, right? Okay, so Anna says, being through hell and back, don't be mistaken. I can still feel anger one minute and back to bliss the other. It never ends. It does end, okay? You do get to a point where you are empty of all anger and there's nothing left. Evan, why do I see my divine masculine playing my birthday number? Okay, we talked about that. Stop thinking about nonsense. Focus. You either want to focus on the drama and live that, or you want to focus on the peace and live that. Focus on the peace. Uh, it was good to be reminded that we don't take on more than we can handle. Yes, you're badass. Thank you for your guidance. Love from India. Thank you. If you've done the inner work and you're so grounded how come you're not in union okay i started off saying i'm crazy too <laughs> well less crazy than before i started off saying that basically i still oscillate between rejection and integration okay and that's why i'm doing this live because i'm trying to go deeper with that for us us and for you of how we are basically separating ourselves and rejecting and i've only been on the journey for one year and nine ten months are so not that long mm -hmm. but you can have it right now so um i'll tell you a little something special in my family it's uh, myself and my cousin are twin flames okay and it's very rare to have more than one person in their family you get two or more people in a family when there's a lot of issues to heal <laughs> so um my family lineage has a lot of problems <laughs> So that's why there's two embedded here. And we're dealing with a lot of stuff. We're dealing with the ancestral stuff, which is quite a bit. Then I've got my own personal stuff. Um, and healing the twin flame stuff as well. And he's healing his too. But then also healing a lot to do with the gay community, which is very messy too. There's a lot of things we're working on. So it's big chunks, taking big chunks to, to, to work on, okay? Um, so that's that. And then probably, uh, when, apparently when I started this lifetime, I was in negative karma. So I hadn't done much work in other lifetimes. So this lifetime, I have had to work my ass off to get here. And we're still going. We're still going. And um, the, the place where we're at now is the divine masculine is going through their stuff and learning. So I feel like I've done a, a lot of my own stuff. There's still more to do with rejection and integration. But I am, union will come for me. In about a year or so i think that's what i've been told from i don't know if you saw my astrology video which i since took down at 39 it will sort itself out i'm 37 now 38 soon so there you go and it happens when it happens um don't be so like i said it's a journey of ascension and just because you think i'm grounded or you think you project your ideas of my aura or whatever that doesn't mean anything i mean how long did it take jesus buddha Muhammad, how long did it take the ascended masters to ascend? It takes as long as it takes. No one's better than anyone else. Okay, so manifest the picture you long for, the future you desire. Not what you long for, that you already have. The timeline, jump into that timeline where you already have everything. Okay, good. Blah, 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 blah. Once you stop on the negative and release the number, they will move towards me and leave the third party correct. Once you stop focusing on the third party, you better believe the third party goes, Broom! <laughs> once you've healed also third party is healing is triggering your rejection abandonment uh codependency insecurities worthlessness blah 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 that's what the third party triggers and uh, when you go within um you also can heal any other things that it brings up and it's also mirroring um any other issues that you need to work on and your twin flame is also working through their karma when you stop focusing on the karmic and you really um, claim and choose your twin flame, you bring them into your heart space, you stop rejecting them, your twin flame will come closer. They'll stop that stuff too. All right. So can I have the signs and dreams as a reassurance to keep going on? If you need them as reassurance for now, then sure. But you want to get to a stage where you don't even need reassurance, where you know beyond shadow of a doubt, there is no doubt. There is no crutch you need. You are on it like a scotch bonnet. Okay. Uh, reversing the chaser runner dynamic can be a solution to manifest our twin flame. Made videos on this. You want to be a stayer. You don't want to be a runner. You don't want to be a chaser. 
A chaser is a runner from themselves. You want to be a stayer, staying in peace, balanced, grounded, etc. Thank you for your guidance. Looking forward to your book. Okay. Divine feminines have to do all the inner work in the universe. Divine masculine is a romantic third party. Just kidding. Let it go and surrender to the universe. The divine feminine does the inner work, divine masculine does their outer work, and then they do switch polarities, and you better believe it. The divine masculine catches up. I've done it before, like a, like <laughs> riding on a horse, and they do put the effort in. They match it eventually. They will match it. You can see it. And they devote themselves to you, and they're really invested, and, and sometimes they even try, they try to go, go even further than you and, 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 get, and you know, learn more. It's fine, don't worry about it. The DM has blocked me ever and says that it's best for both of us. Why don't you believe it? For now, it is probably the best because you focus too much on him and you focus on yourself. Getting ignored by the DM once you confess your feelings is shattering. Yeah, but they're just playing a game, aren't they? They feel the same way. Just can't handle it. And it's teaching you that you don't need external uh, validation for your feelings. You know. It hurts, it hurts. Yes, it does. Eventually it won't. Is the DM in love with the third party? Divine love versus human love is what you need to look at. Divine love is eternal. It's godly. Nothing compares. And human love is just like fast food. You throw it away eventually. Hope that answers your question. I have a feeling that I won't have physical union in this lifetime. Is that possible than knowing? It's just your fears and your doubts and you will manifest that. If you believe that, that's the timeline. Do you think the twin flame and twin soul is different? No, I think it's the same thing. I have a difficult family tree as well. It's not easy. Also, I don't believe any twin flames are in union currently. I believe in a cosmic event causes it for all twin flames who are ready. I know quite a few twin flames in union, and they're true twin flames, and they are together. So there you go. They want the same. Does age gap matter? No. The DM is older usually right i think we're getting towards the end now i'm going to answer the last question do they long for union as the dfs do they do deep down they do but they just don't feel good enough they do they they feel annoyed at times they go for they're going for up and down as well come on they're going for a lot of shit give them grace give them love let it be focus on yourself travel love laugh do what you can to heal, and they'll catch up, and just know it'll be fine. So take care. Keep focusing on that love story, okay? Keep focusing on the love story. Usually DF is older, but it doesn't matter. With Twin Flames, there's always differences. Age, gender, location, religion, race, something or the other, because you're trying to transcend that to be in love, unconditional love. Look after yourself. Uh, what if they're a third party and have children and aren't taking action to commit? Then look at yourself. Where are you not taking action? Okay. There's somewhere within you that is focused on that negative result. You're not focusing on the power of God. You're focusing on the 3D powers, which are not powers. Everything is possible. Everything is possible. Nothing is withheld from you. Nothing is withheld. Everything is there. And how beautiful is that? Nothing can get in the way of your union but you. Why do DMs come in and out when they come in? They act almost self-conscious at times. They come in and out because they're testing the energy and they have to ground it. You have to ground it too. Okay, take care. Nothing is withheld from you.